Hi again then guys and welcome to the 47th pick on my top 50 favourite vehicles for 2018 and in this particular pick we're discussing a car which I have mentioned a few times on the channel in reviews for games and also in a wish list. I believe I included it for Gran Turismo 7 although I don't think this car will come to Gran Turismo anytime soon. It was of course though featured in the Forza franchise and it's a car which as is quite often the case funnily enough for me I have a complete 180 turnaround on my feelings for the car and how good or bad I consider it to be. Because many of the cars which ended up being my favourites, some of them even my absolute favourites, were cars that I initially did not like. And this is one of those occasions, because when I first saw this car, the Devon GTX, which is an American supercar, I didn't think much of it. I thought it looked kind of generic, it's a little bit too simple at least initially, doesn't really look like it knows what it wants to be, and oh look, it's got a Viper engine, Ugh, how, how special, <laughs> who cares really, why couldn't they have just made their own engine? But then over time, because that was of course many years ago, probably a decade ago now, so I was about 14 at the time, and stupid of course, but now that I have more of an appreciation of vehicles, which you would hope everyone would have every year that passes, I can appreciate just how good this car actually was, because of course it's based on a Viper. Why wouldn't it be? The Viper is a fantastic base to work from, plus when you bear in mind that the Viper was changing form to its next generation, and look at where it is now, or where it isn't now, it was a clever idea to try and morph the essential concept of a Viper into a different brand, and for those guys involved behind Devon to make use of that opportunity. It was a very good business move, because although the Viper wasn't getting great sales, and that's why ultimately production ended, there is definite potential there of rebranding the idea of a Viper and what people do love about the car, but giving it a major refresher, so that the idea doesn't get stale, at least for some people, and turn it into something which becomes arguably finally a true supercar. Because for me personally, the Viper never has been. An argument can be made for the ACR, but for me no other Viper has ever been a supercar. The GTSR concept notwithstanding because they never actually produced it. But as far as road cars, for me the Viper has always been between sports car and super sports car, never any higher. However, this car on the other hand, I would say is a true supercar, because something which I've mentioned on the channel before, especially when it came to back when I started my supercar and super sports car review series, there were lots of cars which people argued should be in different series, and sometimes I can understand the argument, others I would just straight up disagree with it, but one of the main issues, and it's always going to be one of the main issues between super sports car and true supercar, is not just performance, because there are so many people who say, well, how could the Viper not be a supercar? It's a 200 mile per hour machine that does 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds. Surely that's the definition of a supercar, plus it's competitive. Well no, not really, because a car just being fast does not make it a supercar. You could take a Volkswagen Golf and give it a thousand horsepower, that doesn't make it a supercar, it's just a really fast hatchback. Likewise, with a supercar, a true supercar, a top tier one, it's about more than just performance, it's about the whole package. And sometimes it's about being, technically speaking, a worse value car. Because if you could buy a Viper for less than this, that should mean that the Viper is a better deal. Which technically, it does. But that's not the point. With a supercar, you know you're going to pay more because that's part of the experience. They are overpriced. They are too rare. Too exclusive. But that's why people love them. They feel special. And that's what the Devon GTX is. So you've got that 650 horsepower Viper engine, top speed in excess of 200, I believe around 205, 0 to 60 in around three and a half seconds, and the looks really did grow on me, because I've never been a massive fan of the Viper's styling. The first generation I do, the RT10, but after that, I could kind of take it or leave it kind of thing. But for this one, it really did grow on me, especially in brighter colours, such as a bright red or yellow. It's a great looking car, I think, now, and it does look like a genuine supercar. Plus, to cap it all off, even though the car ultimately had a troubled production run, let's say, and it didn't ultimately come to fruition, sadly, it is a car which very quickly made an impression, because the Devon GTX was taken around Laguna Seca at the time of its would-be production and beat everything. This is the fastest road car ever around Laguna Seca. That's incredible. 
and it shows the raw potential that this car has and had. So ultimately it's a car which won't ever, I don't think, be in my top 10. But at the same time, it is one which combines my love for vehicles which are truly unique, because it certainly is visually at least, but also it combines that with another one of my favourite elements of motoring, which is taking a well-established and respected concept and basically giving it a facelift, which is why I love cars as well like Mosla so much, which use Corvette tech and then take it to the next level. This one does the same. It takes a Viper tech and takes that to the next level. So I love it. That's it overall though for this particular pick. It's the kind of car which I think some people could absolutely love and some people could be bored out of their mind with. And initially that was the case for me. So that's it for this pick, as I said. Of course, if you are new to the series, you can check out the playlist at the end to see all of the other episodes. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>